Greetings, Kerbonauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and we have here Project Gateway Episode 3. So we are now launching the Zvezda module. This is module number 3. But first, you remember Joseph Kerman? We couldn't find anything that would link him directly to any sort of subterfuge, so unfortunately we were forced to release him. Uh, we will keep an eye on him, though. We won't tell him that, of course, but we will be keeping an eye on him uh, from a distance, discreetly. So here we are. The uh, Zvezda module is now being released into the openness of space on its way up to the rest of the KSS. In episode one, I said that I was using a whole bunch of mods for this uh, series, and I showed in the simple part organizer exactly which ones have parts, but there are mods that don't have parts and didn't show up in that list. So I'm going to throw up a list right now on the screen, and you can pause your video and take a look at that list, and then we'll get back to the good action. Here we are with the orbital injection stage delivering the Zvezda into the same orbit by matching the uh, my orbit to its orbit and then using a maneuver node to drag that out and just line them back up again. Then once we're done with that, we get rid of that lower stage and we send it on its way to go deorbit. As it spins here, you get a nice look down inside to those compartments that I mentioned in the previous video. Those things are so useful. The Zvezda itself has RCS engines on it, little engines from the Cosmos pack, and some monopropellant. Uh, right here you can see that that other stage is now deorbiting, so that will be out of the way, and I'm sure Bill will be very happy about that. Now we need to just head over to the KSS and uh, start our deployment and docking. We'll do our solar panels and radio dish. Speaking of that dish... And now we'll take a look inside the Zvezda. So KLS-4 again was used, that was covered in video number one, uh, explaining what goes into that launcher. And in there you can see we have our Zvezda. Uh, so one thing to note is I have decided that, here let me turn off my filter, uh, get rid of that, and deselect my filter. So you might remember in the last video I said that I was thinking that I should have moved all of my parts that I had welded into one location, and I've done that. So I realized that the command pod, the pods section, has the fewest number of parts of all the things that I have. So by putting them all in there, they're easy for me to find. And so you can see I've got my Zarda, or uh, Zarya body, uh, working on a truss segment for later. And let's see, the Z1 truss is in here. I got my Unity body. And there's the Zvezda head. So we have a separate piece for the head and a separate piece for the body. What that did was it saved me a few parts because you can see I have ladders on here and I put the ladders onto the body and uh, also batteries on there. And you can see that that saved me a, a few parts. So let's see if I can get that hooked up there. Uh, anywhere will do. Okay, that's fine. Good enough. So you can see there you got the batteries and the parts there, the adapters that allow me to put the docking nodes on and just a lot of parts got saved like the whole thing right here is only 38 uh, despite everything that's going on now you can see let's start taking it apart so you can see what's going on in there we got surface lights and some engines there's a little rototron and i control that over here with these servo mechanisms you can see uh, these aren't part of this one those are just left over because every time you go in here with another vessel uh, your entries will keep increasing for all the different groups that you've ever had. Uh, so those were just from other ships. This one only has this one group. It's got the Zvezda antenna arm on a rotor. And by rotating that, I can get this to swing out and uh, point uh, over the top of the vessel and allowing this to start off uh, inside the fairing and not be sticking out but at least when it rotates away then it doesn't get in the way of this docking ring either so some b9 uh, rcs components there now the zvezda is my life support module so you can see inside the hatch here we have hidden away some uh, nicely tucked life support systems so in there we have a wastewater converter to convert into regular water uh, water can be converted into oxygen. CO2 can be scrubbed back into oxygen. I also have, of course, food, oxygen, and water in a small supply. Uh, so moving up, we have regular solar panels and some docking rings. And that's it. That's all that's on this. Uh, little lights here and there. 
And uh, this is a, a very simple construction, you know, only in the 30s on the parts, so uh, very, very good. It's nice and compact. Back to the Zvezda in orbit on its way to rendezvous with the KSS. We have to finish off our deployment here with our solar panels. And you remember I said there were two geosynchronous satellites? Well, we're setting one of them to be the target from here, and then we'll have another one uh, when the Z1 module gets docked that has an antenna on it. We'll have to point its dish at the other geosat. Now here you see I'm setting up another window in my MechJab. You can do custom windows in there where you can put in any sort of information you want. And the information I'm looking for here is a little bit about how big this thing is going to be, how many crew it can hold, uh, how many crew it has at any given time, how big have we gotten, like how massive, what's the mass of the entire station as well as how many parts are we up to because the part count is going to be very important for me to keep an eye on as we go forward with this. Also if I need to do any orbital adjustments I'm going to want to know my max acceleration. We might have to bring up extra engines and attach extra engines as we go along if I don't have the ability to boost the thing up with any reasonable speed or accuracy. While we're watching this deploying, it occurs to me that it might be actually interesting to take a look at this versus the real one and just compare the two. So here's what the real Svesta looks like. And this is what mine looks like. I never showed the first module, the Zarya. Uh, so this is the real Zarya right here. And this one is my Zarya. And then here we have the real Unity and then here we have my unity. So I think I've done a pretty good job, I think, of matching up the, the real versus my KSP versions. Back to the game, and here we are, ready to dock ourselves up and put this life support module in place on top of that cargo module and the unity module. We have our nice little Navy fish docking alignment indicator. Uh, it took me a couple tries to figure out how to make that work, but I finally figured it out. Um, I think I might be able to do a pretty good tutorial on that, just uh, in a future episode perhaps. Uh, but in this one, you can see I've got it already lined up there. The basic idea is you get that orange circle and the yellow circle lined up, and if you want, and, and I do in this case, you can get the rotation with that orange little crescent that's down at the bottom. And if you, you get all those lined up, and it's pretty easy docking. So this thing is 8 meters long. And how do I know? In video number one, you might recall that I said I wanted to go with a sort of scaled down but still relatively proportionately accurate sizing for all these. And that's what I've done with this one, of course. It is about eight meters long. So here's a little trick on how you can figure out uh, how long something is. If you go into the uh, structure tab, uh, you know the normal trusses well, let's find one here. The normal truss segment, this girder segment, it's one meter long. So all you have to do is stick one at the bottom of whatever it is that you're trying to measure, then put some to extend out from there just a little bit, and then you can take an another one and you can put it on top, and now you are measuring from the bottom of this one up, you're measuring how tall whatever it is you're making is. So by extending this up, you can see I'm at four meters, five, six, seven, and eight. So it's roughly eight meters tall. The real Zvezda is a little over 13 meters long, uh, but like I said, I wanted to go with a 60% scale, and so that puts me at about eight meters, and there, that's what we have. In fact, okay, call me a nerd for my stickler to details, but I noticed right here that the docking port is on the wrong side. That antenna and all the pictures I've seen on the back of Zvezda, it's on the same side as the Zarya where it has no docking port. So, of course, I have to undock and rotate 180 degrees and then redock again. Uh, so I take care of that right there and then use my little Navy fish docking alignment and slide that back into place. But now, now I'm happy. Look at that. Okay gratuitous shot rotating with the UI turned off. Beautiful. Look at those lights. Oh, man. Oh, I want a screenshot of that right there. In fact, 
I feel like the lights are so important in KSP to making things really pretty. I should probably cover uh, some of the lights that I've been using. So I mentioned what they were. I said that I was using surface lights. And these are the three types of surface lights right here. So these you can see they have, uh, this is actually, I think it's one light, but it looks like it comes out in all the different sides. And then this one is actually four separate lights that shine in four separate directions. Now, if you don't have your lights turned up, you're not going to be able to see that very well. Uh, so this is how you do that. You go into your settings and then to the graphics page and you'll see pixel light count and you want to set that up as high as you can uh, and still be able to get any decent performance out of your computer. And I have cast sh shadow cascades turned all the way up as well. In fact, here you can take a look at everything I've got set for my graphic settings. And then this one right here is just a one directional light right there. Um, there are also other lights that you could use. You don't have to use the surface lights. If you have B9, they have these really large spotlights and uh, those can open up. The little thing opens and the light shines out right there. It's very similar to this one, much bigger though. Uh, these, I, I can turn these on, you can get an idea of what they look like. Uh, it looks like it has four controls, but it only really needs the one. Well, I don't know. It's probably the, the tweakables is making it look like uh, it has four lights, but it only takes the one to turn on all of them at once. And then we have that very bright individual spotlight right there. We have some other B9 lights like this one and uh, B9 lights also I used to use these a lot so they're really small and I like that because uh, you can get the different colors. We got those and though well that's not really showing up right here but it, it definitely shows up as a nice green when you're out uh, out in space. Uh, we got a red one and then a larger one, I used to use this one. This was before I was using the surface lights, this one right here, this is the one I use pretty much all the time right now for a bigger light. This is the one that I used to use right here. Well, and that one comes from B9. Uh, sometimes I would actually use the battery just to get the green glow. But then I came up with aviation lights. Aviation lights had a green light uh, this is not tweakable. These are old. Uh, maybe there's an update. I haven't checked, but uh, I'd probably have to edit the file myself if I want to make them tweakable. And they're not right now, but there's uh, various colors. And there's also these beacon ones with the red. Uh, they're just brighter than the other lights. And you can do things with them like uh, here, let's go in the action groups and take a look at those. So if you select one of those, you can see they can do other things like they can flash or double flash, interval, cycling, uh, and all the aviation lights are able to do that. So that's pretty cool. I do still use those sometimes for that side benefit. Uh, however, you need to know that these don't really, for some reason, show up as lights. So when you turn on lights by pressing U, uh, the these won't necessarily come on. So what you'll probably need to do is set up an action group where you come in here and you set the light toggle as part of the action group and then you'll have to have a special action group that turns those on and off and then a different one that turns on and off uh, the actual lights. In the next episode we're going to see the deployment right here, the Z1 truss as it reaches its apex and gets ready for its orbital injection and rendezvous with the KSS. Uh, this was an interesting little uh, melded welded part so uh, that should be a good episode, and thanks for watching, Kerbinauts. I will see you later.